I believe there are going to be so many people to vote uh, in favor of recalling Gavin Newsom so that even when they cheat, they're still going to lose. In less than two weeks, the nation's most deep blue state could elect a deep red governor. The California governor recall election on September 14th is seen as a bellwether to the 2020 midterm election because it could not only change California, but also change the national political landscape. So how California comes to this stage? I sat down with the leading gubernatorial candidate, the conservative talk show host, Larry Elder, to find out why he wants this job and why he's confident about it, what his priorities are among all the issues California is facing, what specific measures he would take to address them, and how he plans to win the votes from the Democrats and the independents to get this job. Larry, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. In like 60 seconds, how would you introduce to our audience? Well, I'm a native Californian. I was born and raised here. I attended public schools. Uh, and the reason I'm running is because I'm concerned about the rising cost of living, uh, the rise in crime, the poor quality of public education here, K through 12, and the fact that for the very first time, people are leaving California. And not just rich people, although they are leaving, uh, but middle class people are leaving too. And the number one reason that they're citing for leaving is because of the cost of housing. Also, for the first six months of uh, this year, the rate at which companies are leaving California is twice the rate at which they were leaving, a company, leaving California three years earlier. And they cite the uh, rise in the cost of living, taxes, and regulation. Uh, also, the mismanagement of the forest fires is something I'm going to be concerned about. And the fact that this state is running out of water because we haven't really added to our water infrastructure in about 40 or 50 years when the state was half its size. This state has lots of problems. It's been mismanaged. It's got lots of things going for it other than poor leadership. And I'm going to bring common sense leadership to Sacramento when I become governor. Among all those issues which um, Californians are curious about, in terms of education, what specific measures you will take if elected to governor? One of the things I'm going to be pushing is choice in education. Uh, government has had a monopoly on education, and whenever there's a monopoly, whenever you don't have quite competition, uh, you have a, a, a poor quality and poor accessibility. Uh, there's going to be a ballot initiative so that there'll be what are called education savings accounts so that the $15,000 that we spend per student we, would be put into an account that the parent can control. And the parent can then put a child into a charter school, a private school, uh, a religious school, or even use the money for homeschooling. And the biggest obstacle to that is the teachers union. The teachers union is the most powerful union in the state of California, and they are adamantly opposed to choice uh, in public education. I also uh, am gonna be talking about things like, uh, like merit. There's a public school in California called Lowell High School. Uh, it is probably the finest public school in California. And at one time they had admissions exam. And as a result, uh, between 60 and 70% of the student body uh, is Asian American. They, they now for the first time have gone away with that because they want uh, so-called diversity. This is an attack on merit uh, and an attack in my opinion on the Asian American community. Uh, I know we're talking about California, but uh, one would, I, I would say the, the finest public high school in the, in the country is a high school in Fairfax, Virginia. It's called the Thomas Jefferson School of Science and Technology. They too had an admissions exam and they too have a student body that's between 60 and 70% Asian American. And for the same reason, uh, they're doing away with it uh, because they want a more diversified uh, student body. And again, this is an attack on merit and an attack specifically on Asian Americans. Some years ago, California passed proposition uh, 209. Proposition 209 uh, got rid of the use of race as a factor in college admissions, uh, in hiring, and in uh, government contracting. Uh, and what happened? After Proposition 209 went into effect, the two most competitive campuses uh, in our UC system are UCLA and UC Berkeley, and the percentage of Asian American students went up dramatically, while the percentage of black and brown students went down. The overall number of black and brown students at the UC system did not go down. They just went to lesser uh, competitive campuses like UC Irvine uh, or, um, or, or Riverside. 
Uh, and they, by the way, were able to graduate more likely on time because they were put uh, at a too fast pace at UCLA uh, and uh, UC Berkeley at the expense of better qualified Asian American students. Uh, the percentage of white students stayed the same. So it turns out that the people that were being hurt by the use of race-based preferences were Asian American students. There was a ballot initiative a couple of years ago called Proposition 16 to reintroduce race as a factor uh, in college admissions. Uh, and that ballot initiative was defeated even though the Los Angeles Times and many other left-wing outlets supported it. Uh, it was outspent 20 to one. Those who wanted to keep the race-based preferences outspent those who did not by a factor of 20 to one, but still, in my opinion, the good guys won uh, and race was not reimposed. This is a kind of nonsense that I'm gonna be fighting when I become governor of California. So we get back to merit uh, because merit is what America is all about and competition is what America is all about. And I'm gonna introduce competition uh, in our schools so that uh, we don't have a phenomenon where 80% of the kids educated in our government schools are black and brown. I mentioned that because uh, the left prides itself on caring about black and brown students. 75% of black students cannot read at state levels of proficiency before the pandemic, and those levels are not high. Uh, and nearly half of all third graders could not read at state levels of proficiency. Uh, and the math scores are even worse. So we need quality schools. We need competition. We're not getting a good bang for our buck. And I'm going to change that when I become governor. Yeah, so in talking about uh, this uh, racial preference issue, according to the media, you know, uh, it's actually very divided among Asian Americans. Mainly it's uh, the older generation of Asian Americans. They feel that uh, they benefit from affirmative action, but for the newer gen generation of the immigrants from Asia, they feel that, uh, you know, it should be more merit-based. So in terms of such a, a situation, as a governor, how would you address that? Well, as I said, I'm going to uh, be uh, introducing choice uh, in education. There's going to be a ballot initiative to set up what are called education savings accounts. So the $15,000 we're spending per student would go into an account uh, that the parent uh, would, would control. Uh, and to the extent that there are uh, efforts to do away with merit-based admissions like, the, like at Lowell High School, uh, I'm going to try to do my best to turn those kinds of things around. Uh, I just think it's unfair to um, uh, to punish uh, one group in order to advantage another group. There's a reason we have test scores. There's a reason we have SAT scores. Uh, and one of the things that I know uh, that some of the uh, academic ones do is do away with, uh, with SAT scores. Uh, one of the reasons why the uh, population of Asians is so high at some of the more competitive campuses like UC Berkeley and UCLA uh, is because they're relying on test scores. Uh, they're relying on the ability of people to do well on SAT scores. Uh, and now they're trying to do away with that in order to have a more diversified uh, student body. Uh, and again, the people that are most hurt, most hurt by that are Asian American uh, kids. I think it's unfair. And I'm going to make sure that we uh, admit people based upon merit and not, not based upon skin color. The whole point behind Martin Luther King is that we want a society that one where you judge people by content of character, not color of skin. It is unfair uh, to punish some people uh, for what you think other people have done uh, in the past. It's completely unfair. And one of the reasons, in my opinion, uh, that black and brown students uh, have such poor outcomes uh, is because it starts with the family. It turns out uh, that nearly 70% of black children enter the world without a father married to the mother. Uh, this is quite uncommon uh, in, in most parts of the Asian American community. And Barack Obama once said, a child raised without a father is five times more likely to be poor and commit crime, nine times more likely to drop out of school, and 20 times more likely to end up in jail. Nearly 50% of all Hispanic kids enter the world without a father married to the mother. These cause bad outcomes, whether it's crime, uh, whether it's uh, education. And it is unfair to try to correct those problems uh, by punishing uh, Asian American students who do come from strong families, who do work hard and do perform well on, on tests. Yeah, so in terms of the family issue, as you pointed out, but as a governor, as a government, what do you think is the role there? Well, um, it, it's, it's going to be difficult because um, uh, what we've done with our federal government, we set up all sorts of programs that, in my opinion, incentivize women to marry the government and incentivize men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. Back in the 1990s, there was a Welfare Reform Act that was signed by a Democrat president named Bill Clinton. And for the first time, 
if you were on welfare, there were time limits. You could not be on welfare indefinitely. And they got away with, uh, did away with what are called family caps, uh, a family uh, issue. So that if you had additional children uh, before the Welfare Reform Act, you got additional money. So there were family caps put on, so you didn't get additional money to have additional children. And what happened? The welfare rolls declined by almost 50%. Now there was a good economy, uh, but the decline was far steeper than even the most optimistic people uh, projected because it turned out a lot of able-bodied people and able-minded people got off the couch and went to work because they were no longer gonna get welfare benefits and they no longer gonna get additional benefits if they had additional children. My point in pointing this out is uh, there are incentives. And what we've done uh, is we've uh, uh, changed people's incentives, we changed people's work ethic, and we changed the culture. Uh, we need to reverse that. I'm not ho sure a whole lot I can do about that other than I can tie welfare to work here in California. If you're going to get on welfare, uh, you need to you need to work. And we've loosened the welfare to work requirements both in California and nationwide. And when I become governor, I'm going to do my best to reverse that. The other issue is the uh, public safety. And I know we talked about that at the last press conference. In the media, there's a lot of uh, report about uh, uh, increasing Asian hate crime. How do you uh, see this issue and how would you address it? Well, uh, the number one job of government is to protect people and property, uh, and that is not happening under this governor. Uh, crime is up, violent crime is up in virtually every major city in California. It is up in San Francisco, it's up in Oakland, it's up in Los Angeles, it's up in San Diego. Uh, and I know the media does not like to talk about this, but a lot of the violent crime in places in the Bay Area uh, are against Asian American victims. Uh, and a lot of the perpetrators, a lot of the um, people committing these crimes are people of color, including black people. I haven't been able to find really good numbers about uh, the uh, number of Asian American uh, who are attacked by blacks here in California, in my opinion, because the media does not want to talk about it. But I know that in New York last year, there were 20 people arrested uh, for hate crimes against Asian Americans, and only two of them were white. Uh, so a lot of this crime is being committed uh, by black people against Asian Americans. It's a conversation the media does not want to have because they consider it to be unpleasant and they don't want to talk about the criminality that's taking place within the black community. Unfortunately, that's the case. Uh, the, uh, the black population in California is roughly 6.5%. Uh, however, roughly about 40% or so of the prisoners in California uh, are black. Uh, and again, I believe it starts right in the home. Uh, when you, again, have a breakdown in the family, you don't have a father in the home, the kids are far more likely to commit crime. Uh, and it starts right there. We need to be talking about strengthening families. There is a left-wing think tank. I always try and use left-wing uh, talking points whenever I can. It's called the Brookings Institution. And they say in order to escape poverty, you need to do three things. Number one, finish high school. We talked about the poor quality of our high school education already. Number two, don't have a child until you get married. We've talked about the perverse incentives provided by the welfare state uh, that is encouraging a women not to wait, encouraging men not to wait. And the third thing is get a job. Uh, and all too often here in California, uh, the, the legislature passes all sorts of job killing measures like AB5, like taxes, uh, like regulations, uh, like, like raising the minimum wage, all of which hurt job creators, uh, all of which hurt business providers. And we shut down this government under this, uh, shut down the, the, uh, the state under this governor uh, so that a third of all small businesses, many of them owned by Asian Americans, blacks and browns are now gone forever. So in order to escape poverty, three things, finish high school, don't have a child before you get married, get a job. All of those things, all of those things are made more difficult because of, of the left wing policies that we've had in Sacramento in the last several decades. What you said is quite not political correct. So, um, you know, as a African American in California, why you are able to talk about this in this way and uh, you are not afraid of uh, people talking about you, you know, not uh, politically correct? Well, uh, I have been talking about issues of crime and of the rise of homelessness uh, and of the rise of cost of living uh, and how all too often our so-called leaders play the race card for a very long period of time. I've been called all sorts of names up to and including Uncle Tom, uh, a sellout, uh, Oreo, coconut, uh, I'm used to it. I'm just telling the truth. And most recently, uh, and the, the blackface for uh, white supremacy, right? Yes, I was called the blackface of white supremacy by the Los Angeles Times. 
all because I don't believe uh, in this narrative of systemic racism. Um, you know, calling somebody these kinds of names don't really solve our problems. The fact is that a young black man is eight times more likely to be murdered than a young white man, and almost always the murderer uh, is another young black man. It is a fact that the number one cause of preventable death for a young white man is accidents, like car accidents or drownings. The number one cause of preventable death for a young black man uh, is homicide, almost always at the hands of another young black man. Uh, and these are facts. And calling me names and calling me a sellout and calling me all these silly names does not solve anything. The first step towards solving a problem is admitting that you have it and identifying the problem. I identify the problems and I also believe I have some ideas about what to do about them, including strengthening the families uh, by, by, uh, by le lessening the incentive to marry the government uh, and by lessening the incentive on the part of men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. Right now, the wildfire is just really, especially, you know, right now here in Northern California. So what exactly is the reason? Uh, because the media talk about the media, uh, the climate change. And uh, so the more conservative side talking about the forest management. So what do you think was the real problem and the, what kind of measure you will take to address it? Well, I'm not a climate change denier, although I've been described, described as that. I'm a climate change alarmist denier. And I believe that the biggest factor has nothing to do with climate change. The biggest factor is poor forest management. We've had a war on the logging industry. So now there are only two major logging companies remaining in California. We had a robust logging industry. Uh, the trees were, were thinned. They were cut down. The fallen trees were used for wood. Uh, the dry vegetation was cleared away. But because the environmentalists believe that trees are more important than people, uh, we have had an attack on the logging industry, so our trees have grown, have grown far too thick per acre. Uh, and um, the outgoing governor, Jerry Brown, uh, had a plan to clear 500,000 acres of fallen trees and dry vegetation. And this governor bragged that he cleared 90,000 acres, which would have been a drop in the bucket, uh, but he didn't. He only cleared about 13% of what he said he cleared. So he misled Californians by a factor of seven. Uh, money needs to be spent uh, to clear away these trees so that the forest fires, when they occur, won't, will not be so intense. One of the other things that's happened, and this is kind of a, a strange and indirect uh, consequence, we were talking about crime earlier. Uh, this governor released early 20,000 convicted felons because of the, because of the coronavirus. Uh, many of these felons, by the way, were violent offenders, and based upon statistics historically, the majority of them are likely to reoffend. But one of the things that used to happen with prisoners, the so-called low-level offenders, is they, they were used for firefighting and they were used to, to, to clear away some of the fallen trees and dry vegetation. Well over a thousand of them were used. But so many people have been released early uh, because of this governor's soft on crime approach uh, that that manpower is no longer there. So that's one of the factors uh, as to why the fallen trees have not been cleared away. But it needs to be a priority. Uh, and the governor likes to pride itself on, on fighting so-called climate change. Well, because of the failure to thin these fallen trees, uh, far more CO2 has been admitted uh, in the air in the last three years than I can imagine any, anything that he would have done to deal with climate change. Uh, so that needs, to, that needs to take place. Yeah, and uh, in terms of the water issue, people just heard about the drought a lot. So what specifically do you think is the water problem, uh, the root reason, and uh, uh, how to fix that? Well, droughts are God-made, but shortages are man-made. And we have not added to our water infrastructure in about 40 or 50 years when the state was half its size. Why? Because of the environmentalist control over Sacramento. There are all sorts of projects ready to go that would improve our water supply. Uh, there's a temperance flat project. Uh, there's a project to raise the shaft of dam by about 18 feet, which would allow the storage of a lot more water. We're not building enough underground storage uh, tanks. Uh, so uh, we're not planning for the dry years by capturing more water during the wet years. And in recent years, about 70% of the water has drained off into, into the Pacific Ocean as opposed to being stored uh, for the dry years like we're having right now. Also, Israel is a desert state, but because of desalination plants, Israel is now water self-sufficient. They have a body of water right next to it called the Mediterranean. We have a body of water right next to us called the Pacific Ocean, 
yet we're not building enough desalination plants up and down the coast to capture that water. So farmers are now facing a water shortage. Uh, many farmers are now plowing their crops underground because there's insufficient water. This is absolutely ridiculous. We need to uh, plan. Uh, we need to improve our water infrastructure. We need to build more reservoirs, uh, build more dams, build more canals, and build more under, underground storage so that we can plan for the dry years. Now, again, I'm not a climate change denier. I believe that climate change uh, is real. I don't know to what degree humans have the impact, but it appears that we're going to have more extremes in weather, more extreme uh, dry years and more extreme wet years. And when we have the wet years, we need to prepare to store the water to get us through the years and years of dry years. This is just common sense. It's, it's imminent to, to doable. We, we can do this. And when I become a governor, I'm going to declare a statewide emergency on water. So some of these projects that are already ready to go uh, can be unleashed. California uh, voters have passed bond measure after bond measure after bond measure. Uh, for example, the temperance flat reservoir to raise uh, the Shasta Dam. Uh, and they have just sat there because of the fear of lawsuits and because of the power of the environmental groups. I'm going to declare a statewide emergency so I can suspend uh, some of the rules and regulations that are stopping these projects from going forward. And coming up.